Okay. Um, we're going we're gonna to change it up a little bit. Um, we're going to bring another user on stage. Um, so I'd like to introduce um, Doug Coleman. Um, Doug is from Charles Schwab. Uh, he's the Managing Director of Cloud Platforms, Engineering and Operations. I always have to read the titles to make sure I get them right, you know? Um, so Managing Director of Cloud Strategy and all the things related to Cloud Strategy. Doug, come on on stage. We'd love to uh, spend some time with you. <laughs> hey, so you've got fans on the front row, is that? Is Only that? three or four, Only not three too many. Or four. Yeah. So they, you'll, you'll work for them, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, no big head here. <laughs> well, Doug, thank you for coming. Um, we've, we've heard a lot about um, the, the evolution of the project, the, uh, you know, the evolution of the platform. Um, we've also, you know, from Eric, we, we got a sense of um, what American Airlines has done and what, you know, what they want to see as we evolve. Um, what I was hoping for today is if you could maybe take us through a little bit of the Schwab story around adoption, right? And then we could kind of tease interesting parts of that out as we go. Yeah, definitely. No, thanks for having me. Um, we've, got a, uh, we've got a pretty good story at Schwab. Um, so, so Schwab, for those who don't know, so we've been in business nearly 50 years. Um, over 12 main active brokerage accounts and our clients entrust us with yeah. three and a half trillion of their assets, right? So, so everything that we do is to steward that forward, right? So it, it's built into our DNA. Chuck started it and really with a focus on innovation and that's really where, you know, Cloud Foundry comes in, mm -hmm. right? So it's really helping to empower our digital initiatives. Um, we got some of the most critical operations in Schwab running on the platform. Great. So uh, it, it's a good story, and thanks for letting me share it. It is, it is. So when we spoke before the event, um, you, you were particularly proud of some of the automation work that, yes. that you had put into this platform, um, sort of enhancing that developer experience yes. to kind of fit your workflow. Can you share some of that? Yeah, yeah. So, so our group was really formed in 17 and is really meant to be close to the developers, close to the people who are actually consuming the platform. I'm a long-time developer. Many people on the team are long-time developers. And, and really everything that we put in place is to put those guardrails in. So we encourage innovation from the developers, but while following our guardrails. So, so everything in the back end of the platform, infrastructure is code. So uh, developers can come in, they can set up orgs, they can set up spaces, bind security groups. And that all goes as infrastructure as code. So we have it, it's following those good practices and guardrails, and it really speeds adoption up through the, uh, through the pipeline. Um, so we do that from the back end. Mm -hmm. And the front end, we enforce complete automation of everything going to the platform. We don't want people come in doing CF pushes into production. We want them running their, their pipelines. So static code, dynamic code. So you know, we're trying to follow the mantra that everything goes in through automation. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, being financial services, compliance really matters. So I'm assuming there's, you know, there's quite a bit of thought that you've put into um, getting the aspects of compliance that have always existed sort of baked into that, that automation cycle. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, so, so one of the guiding principles at, at Schwab is really formed around um, trust is everything earned in a lifetime and lost in an instant. And, and it's so true in our, in our technology world, right? You know, it's, um, you know, if you don't follow those good practices, um, you, you, you can lose everything. So, so we have strong partnerships with our pivotal partners, strong partnerships with our application and architecture teams. So, so we come in and we build, so our team, we, we write engineering practices, we, we write working code for teams to consume. So when all these follow the, the guidelines that make sure that we're always audit worthy, we can go back and you know, have um, traceability through the entire stack and through the ent entire deployment life cycle. Yeah. It really can be automated, right? We don't, we don't really have to. It really can, yes. We can let developers kind of be freed up to innovate. Yes. Um, so one, one of the things that thematically that we hear from, from different end users, um, you know, different, different customers of the distributions is, there's, there's sort of a spectrum of adoption cycles that happen. You know, on one hand, you, you sometimes have kind of a top-down mandate and everybody must use this platform. On the other hand, uh, you, you have a very organic, very kind of grassroots and bottom-up. Um, 
maybe you can kind of place yourself on the spectrum, if that's okay, and, and yeah. talk a little bit about how the adoption within the developer community in your company is going. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a very purpose-built um, initiative to stand up, so stand up our organization and really to foster um, bringing this out to the developer community. So last year alone, so we saw over 300% increase in um, applications running in production and a much higher increase in non-prod um, usage as well. Mm. So, and, and, and nearly all of that adoption was from teams finding it easy, convenient, you know, and accessible to go onto the platform. So we've got a lot, a lot of digital initiatives going on like, you know, many other companies, right? But really a smaller subset are the, of the digital initiatives are going initially. It's yeah. really organic adoption. Well, that's, that's really good to hear. I mean, that, that seems to be a, a thematically one of the most successful patterns, right? Yeah. If, you, if you demonstrate the value that you can just push code, you know, and all of those compliance things are kind of, yes. they melt away, they're still there, but yes. they, they melt away from the devel developer's concerns. Um, so, so, well, I wanna, I wanna switch things, because that sounds like a lot of success. I might put you on the spot here, but I'm interested, are there challenges that you ran into that obviously you've gotten over um, that you'd be willing to willing to share. I would I would love to say there are no challenges, but you know we'd know you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody here would start heckling, right? Um, no, tons of challenges. I mean, you know, over 50 years, you build up a lot of different ways of doing things, right? Yeah. So so everything that my team was focused on was really efficiency, self service. So we stood up a lot of tooling around around the platform, and really what it was is to, to bring in these different parts of Schwab that you know, are, are different compliance systems. Mm -hmm. We integrate logging out of the box, we integrate our APM tools out of the box. So, so when um, people come into the platform, they get that, but there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that of went course. into that. And, and it was really you know, talking to the different teams about working differently, following an API first strategy, right? You know, many, many uh, places in the company, the, you know, there weren't APIs that we could leverage to say, hey, we want to go in and, um, you know, dynamically create network routes and this and that, right? But, you know, it's like our, our you know, our network team, they, they, they kicked it, you know, they stood up an API and we've got, you know, that automation going in. Um, but there's a ton of challenges, right, that, that we still, you know, yet to overcome. Yeah, so I appreciate that. So, so now it's your turn and I'd like you to, to put, you know, this community on the spot. <laughs> what, what are the things that they can do better for you? Yeah. Um, you you've got other users, right? It, are there are the things that maybe as a larger community of, of end users that, that you could do together? Um, you have the contributors and the project leads that help build the code. So what, what can this group here do to help Schwab? Yeah, you know, it's... Um I, you know, personally and in the team, you know, particularly excited around some of the stuff coming from Istio and mm -hmm. sidecars and, and being able to build in that service mesh. Yeah. Have, allowing a developer to be able to specify their, their load balancing and then, you know, possibly doing it between a Kubernetes cluster and, and their paths, right? I mean, this is really cool stuff, right? Really a lot of potential. So I think it's, you know, really around, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, bringing more visibility to the platform from, you know, how am I running? How are we doing? Um, there's, there, there's quite a bit that we build around it, mm -hmm. from, you know, to look at overall health of applications and this and that. Sure. Um, you know, availability is core for us. So, so anything that comes into from an availability perspective that helps to keep the platform visible and transparent that we or the developers don't have to worry about, you know, it's, it's, it's a big boon. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, I always appreciate the opportunity to hear, you know, the end user stories. In particular, you know, if you can, you can speak to this community. Um, you know, tell us what we can do to help you better. Um, so thank you so much. It also sounds like a great success um, at Schwab so far. Yeah. And as a customer, I appreciate it. In particular, <laughs> awesome. the thoughtfulness about compliance. So <laughs> thanks again. Yeah, thanks again. Appreciate too. it. Thanks. All right. <laughs>